and welcome to this video and this channel. Um, another subject, I always do these things when I'm on my way to a client and I've got time in the car to think and so I just like to share and talk about things, you know, as I'm driving. Um, so as another subject that I think I've covered before in a previous video, but it was quite a few years ago, is one of um, people wanting help, people needing help, but they don't take the offer of your help, which is an interesting psychological thing that I think happens with people is that, you know, through their life they're having issues, whether it be work or home life or, you know, private life, relationships, you know, whatever that might be for them going on at that time. And you, you know, especially nowadays in the days of multi, you know, social media and stuff, um, you know, they start publicising the fact that they're unhappy or that they feel anxious or that they feel depressed or that they're unhappy with a certain situation or they're unhappy with their supervisor or their manager and, and, and such like. And yet, what I find quite interesting is that people still are not really open to therapy as in, you know, mental mental health therapy, uh, sort of counselling, um, you know, where, and I, and I, this is one of my tasks, is to really try and change people's perception. Now, I've seen several people doing videos about this kind of similar thing where, but on the other, if you like, the other side, I'm a therapist looking at it from my side, uh, from the other side where people have got either mental health issues or they have problems in their life that they think, you know, are causing them problems or they know to be causing themselves problems and they choose to go and have some therapy um, and then they start saying, you know, wow, this is really amazing, more people should really do it. So there are a small percentage of people who know what the benefits of therapy are and how it can help you know, in general, in their life, and then you've got a whole raft of therapists um, around who, you know, can help people out, but find that in the majority of cases, people don't choose the therapy room, and I've, I've often found it quite interesting, I mean, I've even sort of said to people, you know, well, you know this is what I do, um, you know, give them my business card or whatever and then you never hear from them again and yet six months later or a year later you find out that they're still experiencing problems that they're still going through difficulties and, and such like and it's like you know I hold my hand up and say well I'm actually still here you know do you have my card no I don't have I, you know I can't remember where I'm but oh here's my card you know and I give them another card and, I, and I've done this several times I've come across this many, many times, and I just think, well, take that first step. What can I do to encourage people? And, and despite the fact that, you know, I can go through how it works and, and, and all of those things with them, and then it's not actually a scary process, and you're not going to be, you know, labelled as anything by going to therapy. You know, there is no stigma attached, really. But maybe there's a perception. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe there is still a perception that there is a stigma attached to kind of putting your hand up saying, I need help. Maybe that's what the problem is. Maybe that's what we as therapists have to try and address with people um, so that more people will realise that actually therapy is a good thing, that it, it gets gets your head sorted, hence my tagline, you know, about helping people to sort out their world. Um, it's an interesting aspect to being a therapist, 
where you know that you can help people, but people don't want help. Or they deny themselves the help. And again, you know, from a psychological point of view, this is a classic denial <laughs> of self-help. Um, you know, of, of not, not, not admitting that you have a problem that needs some help, assistance. We don't have that social interaction anymore with family much. People feel embarrassed sometimes to talk about family members because they're afraid of the stigma they're attached to it, you know, and the fact that people have a tendency to gossip. And, and you know, they don't maybe want people finding out that, you know, in their family or friends or relatives, um, you know, there is that element to it. But then if you go to a therapist who is completely neutral, or should be completely neutral, and, you know, is not going to go around publicising anything about your issues or your therapy, then that's how it can benefit. But I think that's, in my opinion, I think that's what the stumbling block is with a lot of people. And it's trying to marry the assumptions made and the stigma attached with having therapy and from the therapist's point of view, trying to convince people that they could be helped, that they can be helped with whatever therapy that they need, whatever it is a therapist, you know, is skilled in doing. Um, an interesting subject and an observation I've seen for many, many years, and um, I, I, you know, I think it will take still quite a long time for people in general, for that percentage of people, you know, that don't want to go down the therapy route for whatever reason to, you know, for that percentage to decrease, where it becomes almost the norm. that therapy is something that you consider when you're struggling, when you're going through difficulties in your life that are affecting your mental health. Um, so again, you know, I always say, you know, look and search out for our, our Facebook page, comment there and share your thoughts um, about this subject. It's very welcome. Okay, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you again in another video.